and players cop top eight as well. Fantastic player puts a ton of games into the Pokemon TCG, but he'll be facing off against Nico Alaba, 2020 OCIC champion, Lil Regional top four, Bristol Regional finalist, and also won the Utrecht special event as well. Not currently pictured there, but is a special champion as well. Freya, talk to us about these prize cards. Oh yeah, so that's coming in. You see the one of Fortin prize for Nico, that's not great. Is, Fort, is Nico playing Terrapagos Dustmar? Is he is. Oh my goodness me. So it's going to be that against uh, James playing Reggie Drago. Yeah. So yeah, the prize is not too bad for me beside, I think. But yeah, that one of Fortin, if uh, James can KO and uh, stop, you know, an evolution around, that could be uh, tricky. But yeah, win and in for these two players. Nico's going first. Let's see how it plays out. Let's make some noise. Nico is starting us off there with that buddy, buddy Poffin. You search your deck for any two basic Pokemon with under 70 HP, and you can pop them straight onto your bench. Not only is that going to obviously get the Pokemon in play, also lets you have a little bit of a deck search as well, so you can work out what's in those prize cards. Doesn't get much better being able to search your deck immediately on turn one. Yeah, so great to open with this, especially because dude, there are a lot of, you know, there's a lot of setup basics that you want, and with the Buddy Puffin especially, this is the perfect thing you go for. You go for one Dust Call, and then you go for that Fan Rotom, and then of course with that Fan Call ability, you can search for three more Pokemon from the deck that, that are colorless and have 100 HP or less. So you can grab yourself your Pidgey, you can grab a Hoot Hoot, you can grab Noctowl as well. Phenomenal turn one setup card. Yeah, the order some Support Pokemon. We can't ask for a better start than that, realistically. Maybe you wouldn't want Terrapagos EX in the active, but you know, I think that's perfectly fine. Double turbo, energy attached, and a pass. Doesn't get much better than that oh. for a Terrapagos deck setup. Right, over to James now. He's playing that Rigi Drago archetype. We're going to start the turn off there with a Teal Dance, attach a grass energy to itself, and then draw a card. So, James's deck has a couple of mini games it wants to play first. It needs to get a Rigi Drago V star in play. That's why you need the Vs. I've just hit the bench. And then you want to get your attackers in the discard pile because Rigi Drago V star has the Apex Dragon attack, which lets you use this attack, well, lets you copy it essentially any dragon type attack in your discard pile as this attack. So that is what James wants to do. We do see a professor's research there, going to discard that uh, Giratina V-Star. So now Lost Impact is available via Apex Dragon when it's online. And let's see what James can continue to do here. Yeah, it's a pretty... Nico's going to be breathing a bit of a sigh of relief here, because as you rightly mentioned, starting with a two-prizer, when you see a Teal Mask Ogopon, could be a bit dangerous, because if you're facing against Raging Bolt, then yes. Raging Bolt could, in theory, get a turn one KO, and then you're far behind. But seeing the Red Drago Vs coming down, Nico knows that it's unlikely to almost impossible that this Terrapicus is going to be knocked out. So he's going to be feeling pretty content about that. Yeah, there is a world, because obviously these both, well, Terrapagos yeah, just wants to take two prize cards every turn to win the game in three turns. That's what it really wants to do. Now, Reggie Drago can do that, but it can't attack turn one as you do so like a Raging Bolt can. So James really needs to try and get a one prize within the activate if possible, just so that Unified Beatdown won't be able to take uh, two prize cards next turn. Because it's going to be a bit of an uphill struggle there for James. This is actually James's first deck search by the looks of it. So just working out what is available to him. Yeah, that's like uh, counting the counts of the Pokemon. So with the Teal Mask Ogapon EX uh, over there and the Rated Red Drago V Stars as well. Very important to count those. Yeah, we didn't quite get a full look at what was discarded off that research, but as you already mentioned, having that Giratina V Star discarded is great because that already sets up your discard pile to copy you with Apex Dragon nicely. And oh, hold on, have you spotted something, Shay? No, it's just worth note. We mentioned stuff in the discard pile, but Red Drago is the deck that has the best access of the of the discard pile via that V Star power. Oh uh, yeah, Legacy Star. Then you discard top seven cards of your deck, which often synergistic for your playstyle, actually you want to get your attackers there. Absolutely. But you can also then grab any two cards you want from your discard pile. So any cards you see in James's discard pile now, remember, at any point in the game, once per game, you can grab back any two of them. As we do see a, a Teal Mask Ogapon hitting the bench, and then we're going to see an Earthen Vessel going to grab a Fire Energy as well. Just a Fire Energy, interesting choice here. Not opting to grab uh, the Grass as well. Of course, Earthen Vessel does that. You search for two basic energy. It does. Hmm. Wonder, what the, wonder what the thinking is there. Hmm. I wish I knew. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, James still has the energy attachment for turn because that one that's on the Vigidrago V was a Teal Dance um, via energy switch as well. So there we are going to see Teal Dance there to attach that Ogapon draw one. Let's see what it was. A little energy. Grass energy. Could have searched out yeah, of the vessel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're going to see a turn attachment to the bench, energy switch to the other Reggie Drago V, into Kalefa, into switch. Oh, that's why. Grasping draw. He lets you end the turn and draw up to seven cards in hand. So James intentionally searching for less cards so that he could draw more with the grasping draw from the Kalefa. That makes sense now. <laughs> and James, what he needs to do that, I said he wants to try and end the turn with a one prize within the active. How about little Kalefa has a free retreat card and lets you draw cards as well. Now over to Nico, though. 
can activate that dual seeker ability. Frey, I know you've played this deck a lot. Talk to us about Noctowl. Yeah, Noctowl, absolutely phenomenal card. With that dual seeker ability, if you have a Terra Pokemon in play, once you evolve a Hoo into that Noctowl, you can search your deck for any two trainer cards and put them into your hand. One of the strongest search abilities we've seen in a long time. And it just starts to snowball, right? We saw Nico iron up the Pidgeot here. So your dual seeker can find your rare candy uh, Pidgeot combo. And what does Pidgeot do? Let's just grab any card you like from your deck once per turn. So all of a sudden, it starts to get out of hand. We actually haven't spoke too much about the Terrapagos deck here. As we do see Area Zero Underdepths and Rare Candy. Let's talk to the people about Area Zero Underdepths, Freya. What does that do? So Area Zero Underdepths is really what makes this deck strong and work. So it, once it's in play, again, it's one of those that's only enabled if there's a Terra Pokemon in play, which Terrapagos is. And as the Nico there has just played it, now you can put it at Nest Ball. You think, hold on, the bench is full. How can you do that? Yeah. It's because with Area Zero Underdepths, if you have a Terra Pokemon in play, you can have up to eight Pokemon on the bench instead of five. Ooh, this is we haven't seen this on stream oh. yet, the Boofalon. What does that do, Freya? So uh, we did talk a little bit about this yesterday, so yes. some trap goes, let's play it. But what that does is if you have two Boofalon in play, that Curly Wall ability comes in and reduces the damage that your basic colorless Pokemon take by 60, which is a huge damage buff. It is a huge no oh, 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 anti-damage buff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because that's one of the downsides of the Terrapagos archetype. Sure, it can hit really hard that unified beatdown, hitting up to 220 with a double turbo energy attachment. And it's a basic Terra Pokemon that can activate these Jewel Seeker. By the way, Nico is off to the races here. Oh, Another look at this. Jewel Seeker activation, which is finding a Prime Catcher and a Professor's Research. Nico hasn't played a supporter yet, so Nico is fully off to the race here. But as I was saying, the sort of main downside to Terrapagos is its HP. It only has like 230, I believe. Not hard for many decks to get around. Oh. So that Curly Wall, as we do see Prime Catcher into Reggie Drago V and into the Pidgeot. But remember, as a free retreat cost, I can't even keep up with what Nico's <laughs> doing. There's a Professor's Research, still has seven new cards to play this turn. And hasn't even used the Quick Search yet. Hasn't even used the Quick Search. So what Nico's basically saying, whatever I want to do this turn, James, unfortunately for you, my friend, I can do it. Yes, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So yeah, super, super strong there with the, with the Jewel Seeker. Um, so, going to take a look through there with a quick search. Didn't quite see what uh, what Nico grabbed there. I'm sure it was something to set up for next turn. But we did see off the Professor's Research. He already drew a Buddy Body Poppin. So we know that he's able to get the full complement of eight Pokemon on the bench. Yep. That will mean that Unified Beatdown will do 30 damage for each of those bench Pokemon, minus 20 for the Double Turbo Energy, 220 for an exact knockout on the Regidrago V. Yep, you don't get bonus points for hitting over the damage. All you got to do is hit that KO. We do see the second copy of Bufalon come down. So that means that Curly Wall is now live. So any colorless basic Pokemon that Nico takes damage with will get reduced by 60. That is a monstrous number. Effectively giving a Terrapagos EX a grand total of 290 HP, but worth noting as well, would actually work on a Blood Moon Earth Saluna, giving it, what, 300 and, what's that, 120? 320 effective, That's yeah. silly. Yeah. Now, very clever here from Nico. Does opt to put down that the Dust Skull. Wasn't able to find the pieces to evolve into a Dust Noir yet, and this is a bit of a vulnerability. Of course, that Dust Skull does have 60 HP, so if James can get up that Regidrago V-Star get the Dragapult EX in the, in the discard pile, you can use that uh, Apex Dragon to copy Phantom Dive, and those six damage counters are always going to be knocking out one of those Dust Skulls. Yep. <laughs> Um, and that Phantom Dive, obviously, if it's Titan Dusk, it wouldn't matter, but we'd get around that Curly Wall as well. Yes, because so, it's placing damage yeah, counters, placing not doing damage. damage. Okay, it's over to James' side of the board now. We're going to start the turn off there with a Teal Dance. Uh, just for that Clef, but does have a free retreat cost. Another Teal Dance draw one. That's two cards, support cards, still available. Did you want to raise Drago V-Star off that? So now yeah. Drago V-Star is online. Do we need to get a fire energy and another grass on there, though, if we want to use Apex Dragon? Yeah, but I think he's got it, though. There's an Earthen Vessel and an Energy Switch, so he's got all the pieces to put this together. I think the last piece he's missing is just getting that Dragapult on the discard. Problem is, with that Curly Ward online, um, Lost Impact doesn't take a KO now. No, no, it doesn't. Mm. So there's no... Mm. Yeah, there's no like there's no raging bolt, I imagine, in this list. So there's no way to actually get through this Terrapagos in one hit, so I think you're right. It's going to have to be some Phantom Dives and try and pick up extra prizes at a later date, I think. And, and that, is a, that is a fine way to go about it still. Yes. It's still yes. it's quite strong, but this is exactly why uh, some, not all, uh, of uh, the Terrapagos list opt to play this Boofalon, because it's very annoying for your opponent. Yeah. It makes it, it, it ticks down very nicely in terms of protecting your Terrapagos from KOs with certain numbers. So as we do see Nest Ball for Fez and Dippity and a Flip the Script activation there as well, letting you draw three cards if one of your Pokemon was knocked out last turn, which of course that Reggie Drago V was. Now we do see Earth Investor going to grab one basic copy of Fire Energy and one basic Grass as well. Yeah. Now, the key thing for James here is, so the yeah, Pheasant Dippity's down, Earth Investor will play that now to just get the energy out of the deck. The most important thing to him to find now will be another Reggie Drago V, because if there's only one out, it's going to be very hard for James to keep a chain of attacks because there's nothing to evolve into a Reggie Drago V-Star. 
guess it's worth uh, James can actually go over the five bench over as well, right? Because the area zero. Oh yes, he can right. yeah, absolutely. He can. So yeah, he can go. He can get all manner of bench Pokemon if he really wants. So. Yeah, Teal Mask Ogre Pond is indeed a terror Pokemon. That's why we also see uh, James, uh, like some other list for Regidrago V Star, actually ups to play uh, a small package of that Noctowl line, much like yes, Nico is playing. Of course. Here we do see the Ironer. Okay, this is one way that James can try and stem the bleeding here a little bit. So it reduces Nico's hand size down. Remember, Nico does have that quick search. So worth noting, there is no Hoot Hoot developed actually. So there will, no, be, not no, right there now. will be no Jewel Seeker available for Nico. Yeah. Yeah, that was his bait uh, from uh, Nico last turn because over that last bench slot, he could have opted to put down Hoot Hoot instead, but yes. he valued keeping the Dusk Hole option in place so that it's less likely that uh, he won't have access to a Dusk Hole next turn. Oh, I do apologize. Now, Flip the Script has been activated. It wasn't activated before nah. the. He just kind of nest balled oh, it a little yes. bit diagonally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> nest balled it a little bit diagonally there, but that's okay. So there's Flip the Script. So, did join into Prime Catcher. Okay. Apex Dragon is currently live. Legacy Star hasn't been used, but I think we only. I only saw the Giratina and maybe. The Dragapult EX at the discard yeah. pile. Now, with that Prime Catcher, there's a couple of different routes you can take here. You can consider maybe actually just going after both the Dusk Goals. You go Phantom Dive or KO both for the active and the bench damage. Yeah. Or if you want to prevent your future math for, for fixing from being annoying, you could also bring up one of the Boothalons, KO one of them. Oh, there's a Temple of Sinnoh replacing the stadium. Opting to keep the boot, oh, I guess that makes sense actually, because yeah. the, the knock tiles are yeah, yeah. They've been right spent, now. yeah, there was yeah. very easy discard there from uh, Nico, just the fan rotom and the two knock tiles. But yeah, with that stadium replacement, you do have to discard down again. Oh, hold on a second. But the Tempo Sino turns off the double turbo energy right now. So it, as it stands now, Nico won't be able to attack. And uh, no, we'll have to find a replacement stadium. I mean, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be too hard with a quick search, to be fair, for the Pidgeot. So, so, you know, even with that, I know we'll be able to find a replacement stadium, but does still need to set up more bench Pokemon to do more damage, unified beat down. And there we see the Dragapult EX coming in and a second Ultra Ball to discard so that now Apex Dragon can copy the Phantom Dive. Yep. So there we go. So a few hurdles for Nico to overcome here, Jason. This is, and this is what this high-level gameplay is all about. Even if you're off to a bad, uh, worse start, I should say, is you have to start making your opponent answer questions. Like, you, don't, uh, you need to replace your stadium now. You need to fill your bench now. You need to do all this stuff, and I'm going to be sprinkling damage around. Can you do that? Let's see if Nico can, as James yeah. does grab the Radiant Charizard yeah. off so, the Ultra Ball. So here's the thing. If James isn't able to set up another Regidrago V, I would really like to see James KOing both the Dusk Goals because in this instance, if you don't, oh no, he's going to go for the Buffalon. There is a little bit of a risk here, though. If you leave one of the Dusk Goals in play, then the other one could yep. evolve to Dusk Noir, and then you do have enough damage to KO the only Reggie Drago V star in play. Oh, I agree. Oh, is, oh, is that oh, going to spread things out a little bit? Interesting. Okay. Actually, not opting to KO anything except the active Buffalon. Okay, yeah, so Phantom Dive does 200 damage to the active and actually spread six damage count on your opponent's bench Pokemon any way you like. So we've gone four on Buffalon and one on Terrapagos EX. So it is over to Nico's side now. And uh, one on the Pidgeot as well. Oh, so one on the Pidgeot, I apologize, because it moved into the active. Yeah. I didn't see it. So Pidgeot's in the active. The Pheasant Dip EX comes down, flip the script, activation immediately. Then you draw three cards if one of your Pokemon was knocked out last turn, which of course it was. Let's see. Should we see another double turbo energy? So that means you can actually attach that to Terrapagos and you will be able to attack at the very least. Not the most efficient way of going about it. No, 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 not really. Um, yeah, it's... It's tough because there's a few different things you need this turn, and yeah. Quick Search only gets you one card, so you really want that flip the script to find you some of the pieces, but I don't really think that was the case. And no. like you mentioned earlier, with no Hoot in play, Knocked Howl isn't an option for Jewel Seeker either. Yes, there was a world in which you could have actually uh, fought him out into a Hoot Hoot, but that's currently prized, so that's... Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's just, uh, that one of uh, coming back to bite Nico a little bit here. Now... There is a chance still for Nico to reach for the KO. Uh, so with the Dust Mar, uh, with yep. the Curse Blast damage, you can get there. But that is why, so I just noticed last turn, James opted to grab a Radiant Charizard. Yep. With the two price KO that Nico would take, it only needs one fire energy. And I think that's why, um, and, yeah, 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 took yeah. a Buffalo, and James set up with damage in that way, because now it means that Nico also needs to find a Night Stretcher to get back the Buffalo. Yeah. Because now that Buffalo, when there's only one in play, it's kind of useless. It's just taking up a bench slot, right? Because uh, Curly Wall needs another one yeah. to activate. Yeah, so right now it's essentially doing, well, nothing. <laughs> and it's been set up as well to four damage on it. We'll, uh, after another Phantom Dive, the other six can Ooh, go and look at the other one. Oh, there it is. Blast, I apologize. That's going to put 130 damage into the active. We now see a Night Stretcher 
to grab Hoot Hoot makes complete sense. Yeah, yeah just opting for uh, the just. I think that's enough, isn't it? I think as long as there's a replacement for the Temple of Sinnoh. Oh no, double double. Here we go. Oh, that's a 40 damage. Oh no, it's not no, 40 it's damage not reduction the because of the Temple of Sinnoh. Yeah, oh my goodness. It's an interesting, interesting interaction. Temple of Sinnoh says yeah, special energy in play have no other text. They all count as one colorless. So both of these attacks are just two colorless energy. That means it's exactly enough because like 130 plus 150 is 280, which is Reggie Drago's HP. That's oh, yeah. that's uh, I love that. There we go. I said this one wouldn't be the most efficient way, but it's perfectly <laughs> fine. But now, without Curly Ward online, that Combustion Bluff from that Charles RDX will take a big swing KO. Very nice, but James will need to try and develop a Reggie Drago V here, but it does put Nico away from being a boss's orders away from closing up this game one. Yeah, well, I mean, we'll seem to set up a bit more on the bench, of course. So we're not, definitely not doing enough damage right now with a unified beatdown no. as it stands. But uh, and yeah, this Iron is going to make things tricky as well. But that's exactly why Nico wanted to clear the bench space, both to use the Dustmar, but also so that Hoot Hoot is back online, so that Noctowl isn't out to this inevitable Iron Yes. He does still have Pheasant Dipity as well. So you we'll do. be able to. And Quick Search as well, I guess. And Quick Search. Yeah. So, you know, the Iron might not be as effective yeah. as James would like. But you have to answer those questions or ask those questions. Yeah. And because it is a lot that Nico needs. So, ultimately, James is still playing the odds to the best visibility. There comes the Super Odd. So, has the Temple of Cinnamon in play as well, right? That is true. So there won't be any double attaching next turn to get out of this, like we saw there. So, we'll have to replace the stadium. Yeah. As and James does play a Super Odd, sorry, just a shuffle and a Rage Rago V and two covers of basic oh, fire. Oh, hold on a second. I just realized he's not What's actually that? seen the fire energy yet. He actually needs to draw it off of this flip the script with the Pheasant Dipity. Yeah. Yeah, or Earth and Vessel will get there as well. Yeah. But support has been played, so it is going to have to be Earth and Vessel. Or the switch is not an option. Yeah, so has to find it either using Teal Dance or we flip the script. Let's see if he can find it. It's going to be, if he can't find it, this game is, is, is I'd say, as good as over. Here comes Teal Dance in the first instance. Okay. Teal Dance, draw one. Is it red? The answer is no. No, oh, Earth and Vessel! vessel. Oh, hey, it's as good as red. <laughs> it's as good as red. It's half red, half green <laughs> in Veggie Drago, isn't <laughs> it, really? Let's be honest. Pretty much a, a, near, a near enough perfect draw there, because now not only can you get the fire engine for yeah. the Radiant Charizard, but you can get another grass and teal dance again. Yeah, there we go. Who needs to flip the script? <laughs> Who needs to flip the script? I mean, I'm sure James will still be using oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah, so, yes, of course. That, you know, when, you, when you're sort of digging in these sort of these late game-ish turns, when you draw your out early, it's like, okay, now the pressure's off a little bit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Every other card is a bonus. Okay, there's another Teal Dance. Whoop. Was that knocked out? Yeah. There's Flip the Script, draw three. We'd really like to draw a Reggie Dragon over here. There's an Ultra Ball, that'll do Ultra it. Ultra Ball, Jamming Tower. Probably won't be playing that. I think, I think that's going to be very quick Ultra Ball fodder, I imagine. Yeah, we, leave, we'll, we like that Temple of Sinnoh. Yeah. Play, or, or maybe not, just start the Noctowl and, and the uh, Esquire. Well, I guess it's still a replacement for uh, Area Zero Under Depth, so probably more value than Noctowl and Squawk Billy right now. Great point, actually. Yeah. But he's definitely not going to play it now. <laughs> no, oh, no, no, no. We'll leave Temple Center in as long as we need to. Yeah. As long as we have to. Yes. Okay, so there we do see Ultra Wolf Reggie Drago V. That's going to come down. Needed to see that. Okay. Goodness gracious. So that Combustion Blast Raging Charles that I imagine we'll be seeing now. Yep. There's 250 damage, reduces the attack cost by one thanks to that ability for each prize card your opponent has taken. So can be used for a grand total of one. Fire energy. That's one of the best attacks in the game. Use it for one for one energy. It really is. Over to Nico now. Promotes Charles. Um, Charles. I'll pitch you up, and then uses flip the script. Okay. What is Nico looking for here? So Area Zero is a good start. Area Zero is a good start. So there's two ways to go about it. You can okay. either use Dust Noir to KO the Clefer and then just attack with the active, or you can oh. find a Gusting card to KO a two prizer. Those are like the two avenues to win. I think they're not impossible to pull off, but they do require a good bit of cards. So Nico's going to have to plan out his turn very carefully to make sure they can put it all together. Well, it looks like it was iron up off the quick search. I think that was a Dust Noir, so that's probably going to tell us going to try and Dust Noir and then KO with active or KO active, right? Yeah. Um, wait, does he does he have it? Oh no, Ultra Ball. Uh, Ultra Ball for Oh, Night Stretcher. So Wait, hold on a second. If there's a Blood Moon Nurse Luna in this god pile, you can recover it and then just bring it to the active, and that'll be the game. Yeah, there it is. Oh, wow. It's going to see the Blood Moon coming out, doing a crisp 240 damage with a similar ability, meaning it could attack for free. And Nico was able to close that game out there. James, a little bit off to a slow start. Nico closed the door and is currently one game up here in our Swiss Round 12, winning in feature match here at Little Regionals. Yeah, Nico able to put it all together. And this is why the Blood Moon Nurse Luna is so important in this uh, Trap Ghost deck especially because it is the kind of deck that it plays a very low energy count. You're playing four double turbo and maybe one jet energy, if that. So yeah, you're coming in and look back at the replay of that first game. We see it panda at the start. Big aggressive start there with the Trap Ghost, getting the big KO on the Reggie Drago V. Nico feeling very, very confident with his setup, set up absolutely perfectly. And then going back over to James's turn, was able to respond. He you know, had the Reggie Drago V set up, took some prizes of his own. It was just this back and forth, back and forth. But every single time, neither player really missed the beat and Nico just had the first beat. 
so you just kept yeah. the advantage. And that's what happens when these sort of high power decks are just slamming into each other. Nor a lot of time it's just who can take the first two prize KO. And if you're on the receive end of that, all you can do is try and disrupt, disrupt, disrupt. And James did a lot of disrupting. We saw the Radiant Charizard at the end. Two saw Temple of Sinnoh. We saw getting rid of Bufron, turn off Curly Wall. But in the end, that powerful combo of Curse Blast plus that Blood Moon Earth Luna, which attacks for free, might I say, is just too much okay. to overcome. And James is currently in a 1-0 deficit. And that was a double sort of advantage and uh, winning game from the Dust Noir's ability, because not only did that KO the Cleffer, but that gave uh, James a prize, which meant that the Blood Moon can attack yeah. with zero energy. <laughs> All right, let's do so these prize cards there. Mui X and Fez and Dippity prize for James. Didn't quite manage to see Nico because the players are off to the races here in our game two. James to start us off has led that Cleffer. Ooh. And we like that, yeah, but we, then actually we don't because it's an easy KO. Yeah, yeah, we, we like it as long as we can get another Pokemon down. And there is an Ultra Ball, so James can get another Pokemon down. But were, if James didn't have another Pokemon down, Nico could have been Fury 1 for double turbo on a fan Rotom in a stadium. Yep. <laughs> yep, that is true. That old. What is it? Oh God, what's that? It does something to do with stadiums, right? It's, oh, it, it okay. can't attack unless... Assault landing. Yeah, if there's no stadium in play, it does nothing, but it does for one color energy 70 damage. That is enough to KO a Cleffer, even after the damage reduction with the double turbo, but there is an Ultra Ball, so you know, James can breathe a sigh of relief. And then also worth noting, you're probably thinking, why are we talking about Fan Rotom having to get rid of the Cleffer when you could just use Unified Beatdown? You can't. You no. can't use Unified Beatdown on your first turn going second. So Nico won't be able to use any Unified Beatdown next turn, worth noting. Yes, it is. It's normally, you know, these kind of aggressive decks, they like to go second because yes. you can't get attacked, but, but uh, Trapagos has that restriction. So it doesn't matter if you go first or second, Trapagos can't attack. Yes, exactly that. So. James did Ultra Ball with two energy switch, worth known as energy Ooh. switch, rather important to get energy onto Red Drago V Star. Now, like we said, Legacy Star, which we actually didn't see in game one, I believe, right? No, we, uh, we, did we? No, we did. No. I, I apologize. No, we did. Um, so that means having him in the discard part of means they can get plucked back. No, actually, I don't think we did. Now that I think about it, because he didn't really need to. Uh. Yeah, yeah, he was saving it for later, but he never got a chance to use it because the Red Drago V Star got KO'd. Yes. Yeah. So whereas anything in discard pile can be plucked back here. Over to Nico now. Let's have okay. a look. Rare right, so so candy, double turbo energies, as a professor them. Research. Ultra ball. Okay. So if you if you have an ultra ball, you're good to go. That's really all you need. That'll get you fan Rotom. That'll get you free 100 HP or less a colorless Pokemon. You're off to the races. They're loving to see that. And yeah, good to eye up that fan Rotom straight away. Yeah. You know, you know what this fan Rotom reminds me of? Well, what? Uh, older players who've been playing the game for a while. I know Fred definitely wanted this one. That Hooper EX. Oh, oh you're right as well. Very similar, doesn't it? <laughs> Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay, which obviously got played in Mega Rare Quas, which is very similar to this Terrafagos yes. deck as well. Yeah, that fan core Billy is so good, isn't it? Free yeah. pro core. As we saw in the first game, we just grab you everything you want. Your Pidgeot, oh no, well, your Pidgey, and then your double Hoot Hoots. Yeah, and uh, and if it's important to get down early as well, it can even grab you Bufalon too. Yep, yep. It does have 100 HP. <laughs> So yeah, it's going to be. Oh, we got. I have some research for good measure as well. I mean, getting rid of uh, one of your four double turbos doesn't feel great, but free is usually enough to carry you through the game regardless. So yeah. uh, I think you're fine to research here. You want to dig further into the deck. You want to see what you can find. And yeah, after that research, now going to go for the fan call and uh, try and uh, try and see if you can. I mean, if you can get down the Bufalons early here, that might actually be really good because yeah. it would stop uh, some early aggression from James. But it depends on what the rest of his hand is like. Oh, I think he's going for it. Makes sense. If is there no. one in hand already? I think there is, you know. I think there is. Was there an area zero under depths in that hand that got researched away? Uh, ooh, that I'm no, not not in the hand that got researched away. No, I think oh, okay, it was just okay. a double turbo. Okay, yeah. okay, because just otherwise you play it down for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah just because it was worth noting that Templar Sinner was quite a factor, so we want to keep an eye on Nico's ability to, to replace Dames. As we do see that fan call concluding for what double hoot hoot. I think was that Pidgey or was that a Bufalon? Uh, it was a Bufalon. There was a the Pidgey's already in hand, so. Ah. So actually, there we go. Yeah, and this instance is going to go and just get that boost on down straight away. And I like this a lot because James is going first in this game, so there is the viability of a very scary turn to attack. Yep. Um, but the Boothlon makes the turn to attack a lot less scary. So now you're not worried about uh, getting KO'd by Lost Impact, for example. Yes. James, off to the races. They're going to put Temple of Sinnoh down, play Presses Research, evolve into Rage Drago V Star. So it just needs to get another energy online. We'll be able to use Apex Dragon. Oh. Let's use Supporter, but oh, that, I don't that, think that, that hand supports that. That hand's atrocious, Shay. Look at that. It's, what is it? Two, uh, four it's energy. It's going to have to be the bailout legacy star, it, it, I think. It's, it's four energy, a Dragapult, and an Earthen Vessel, and something else. Oh, that's, that's, that's really rough there from James. Need to see James. a Teal Mask Ogapon. 
Okay, <laughs> get rid, get rid of them. Yeah. Ooh. Oh. Okay, this isn't good here. Yeah. After that, yoga, we have to take an energy switch. So that means yeah. that Prime Catcher is now in the discard pile. Now, I said the Vintage Dragon V Star is a very good way of manipulating his discard pile. Only until Legacy Star has been used. After that, the discard pile is a discard pile. No more manipulation for the most part, apart from Super Rod. So that Prime Catcher will not be getting used. Yeah, yeah, that's rough. I mean, it's still it's nice that at least with that James was able to just set up. But you really you yeah. want Legacy Star to get back the key cards. You don't really yeah. in an ideal world you don't want to use it to bail yourself out of a bad setup. It's there for when you need to do it. But I mean, this can't feel great for James right now. Yeah, you don't want your Legacy Star to get a Till Mask Ogre Pom. <laughs> You've got so much ball search to go and find it. But you know, if needs must. At the end of the day, you have to do what you got to do. Earth and Vessel does discard the uh, Dragapult EX. Teal, Teal Dance activation there. Attach your energy, draw one. Yeah, I mean, this is still a pretty decent turn yeah. because uh, now you can energy switch onto the Red Dragon V-Star. You can use Apex Dragon and you will be getting the K on the Pidgey at least. So that's, you yeah, know, that's something. That is true. We saw how impactful that Quick Search really is. So being able to deny that as early as turn two yeah. is very good. And it's still a turn two yeah. Apex Dragon. Yeah. And like we mentioned before, because the Phantom Dive places damage counters rather than doing damage, the Bouffalant will not protect it for uh, yes. the Curly Roll ability from that. But it does prevent the damage into that active, as you can see there, only putting on 140. Yes. Okay, over to the negative side of the board here. Does need to get rid of that? Well, I mean, doesn't have to get rid of Temple of Sinner, but with one double turbo energy on your discard pile, I think a double attached unified beatdown is going to be a lot more costly. Yeah, well, I mean, regardless of um, whether... Uh, sort of... Uh, regardless of the fact that the Temple of Sinnoh does you know, obviously shut off the double turbo energy, you want the area zero undepth regardless because you just want the extra the bench extra down damage, yeah. so you do the extra damage you by beat down. So it's important no matter what. And yeah, there's and a we do see the area zero again eyed right up there on the Jewel Seeker. We cannot away. afford <laughs> to let in that Temple of Sinnoh hang around any longer than it realistically needs to. Yes, not, not at all. But now it'll be interesting to see what the other card he goes for here. I think a Buddy Buddy Poffin would probably make a lot of sense just to try and get, you know, a little bit more going with your setup. Although, what, what was that? Was that... It wasn't a Cassiopeia, was it? Or was, that, or was it a Penny? Oh, it's a Penny. Okay, that's an interesting inclusion. It is a Penny. Ooh. Yeah. Guess that could make a little bit more sense if you're playing the booth a lot and you can try and absorb a bit of damage and then Penny it up. Yeah. Perhaps. I mean, right now that's really, really strong because you, you know you basically just uh, you basically undo a good chunk of the turn that James just had there. That seems really, really, yeah, really good. Yeah, that is an insult. <laughs> right here, <laughs> lack of a better term. There's Area Zero. There we see the Penny going to pick up that... Wow, remove that damage. Curly Wall doing a fantastic job. Says your Phantom Dive, your attack basically just plays six damage counters. Yeah. Um, and now Area Zero is online. Buddy Buddy Poffin. So yeah. now Nicker can go wide and fill that bench. Important to note, so the way Penny works, it's not a card we've seen in other, in other than control archetypes lately, but mm. it states you can just pick up any basic Pokemon in play and put it into your hand. But unlike Professor Tura's scenario, when you use Penny, you also get all the cards attached. So yes. Nico was able to preserve that double turbo energy and put it back on the fresh Terrapagos. And then we do see Buddy Buddy Poffin concluding for Dusk on Hoot. Now, because there was no Dusk on developed last turn, we're not going to see any KOs here, but we are going to see a big unified beatdown for what? Yeah. 220 is the max, right? Uh, yeah, 220 is the max, but here with uh, one less, so it's going to be uh, 190. Okay, not bad though. We'll um, take that. I mean, with, if you follow up with a Dusk or, uh, or rather with a Dusk or a Curse Blast, that, that is a KO, but. Mid turn mm, KO. Mid turn KO, but unfortunately, Nico didn't get down another Dusk Goal, so that does mean oh, that yeah. if James Phantom dives again, you can just target down that Dusk Goal very quickly. I know there's a lot of discourse online about what is the optimal Dusk Goal, and when you have 60 HP, that does mean you are inside of range yeah, uh, of I mean, the I mean, Phantom Dive. Uh, there, there is no 70 HP Dusk Goal, Oh, there isn't? No, it's no. Oh, I, I assume that's what there was all discoursing about. No, okay. the, no the discourse is the joke that basically the, the two of them in the decks that are played and you can never use evil one's attack i think oh, there's a very okay. very minor margin on like mui x copying oh, one yes. of them i think so that's why people play this one from brilliant stars usually but no, the discourse is more just like a bit exaggerated like played up for laughs <laughs> as we do see a Reggie drago v hitting the bench with uh fire energy energy yes, switch it's going to move it yep from the till mask ogre point onto bench Reggie drago v but yeah worth noting if that discord does stay um on the board for whatever reason that could be a mid-turn knockout, mid-turn knockout. Yeah, but I, 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 you want there's no way James is going to allow that. He knows how crucial the, the, that Dustin is going to be in order to help Nico get really back into this game. So yeah. he's going to be targeting down uh, post-haste, I would imagine. Oh, but the hand's not great, though. I've got to say, there's really not a lot for James to be working with here. There's no extra draw options other than keeping that grass energy in hand and then uh, going for teal dance again next turn. But yeah, no, I mean, look at that hand. Yeah, it's not, it's not looking good. It's not looking good there. Um, we do see that Earthen Vessel concluding. Going to grab that Grass Energy. Yeah, that is... 
Basic energy are good, but you don't want them in the hand. You want them in play. We do see Super Rob being played. They're going to shuffle in. Ray Drago, V Star, Basic, just those two, and a Basic Glass and shuffle mm -hmm. up the deck. So then, because yeah, you give it the Phantom Dive here, um, you'll do 140 to the active again. You'll KO the Dusk Goal, of course, so unless there's something that we're missing in terms of they might be better to go for something else. Because Nico had a Nest Ball in hand, so he oh, wanted you to, go. yeah. If he wanted to, he could have gone for a second Dusk Goal, but opted not to. So there must be something Nico's thinking up here that we're missing. Yeah, that's a good point. Definitely had the option, as we do see the Phantom Dog going to KO, bench the Dusk Goal, and place that 140 damage back into the active, uh, you know, it's a bit of a rehash. When James has taken two prize cards, though, done it the old fashioned way by moving two yeah. one prize cards. Oh, and one of them was a Pheasant Dipity X. Yeah, that's a very good prize card to take. Oh, yeah. Did, we didn't even get a chance to see that in the prizes. They went so quickly. Yeah, they yeah. went so quickly, yeah. Yes. Wow. All right. Let's see what Nico could do here. Probably just getting it. Well, taking a care is the bare minimum. What else do you think Nico's going to try and do? Do you see Jewel Seeker? This might give us some insight into what his plan is. Yeah. I think this plan has got to be, especially given how you know, James wasn't working with much, but has taken the prize card. Oh, just wait, he, he just scrolled past the Thornton. <laughs> we could see Thornton just scroll, perhaps. Oh, oh, yeah, that was probably his last game, right? Yeah, so he yeah, yeah. Have it. Oh, that's what... Oh, oh that, that would be... Oh. oh, the Thornton could be coming in. Oh, my goodness, Jay. <laughs> oh, he's, he looked again for Iron Man instead. Oh, OK, ah. he just scrolled past it. I was like, oh, great, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> But, you know, to be fair, though, that's actually something we have to keep in mind for the rest of this game. Thornton can swap any of these basic Pokemon into a Dusk Goal, which means Curse Blast is technically online yeah. at any point. Yeah, it's an it's a interesting mechanic the way it works, because, yeah, with the Thornton, you swap one of your basic Pokemon in play with one in a discard, but it's treated as the same Pokemon, so it's treated as a Pokemon that's been in play for a turn, so you can still evolve it, yes. even if it's uh, fresh, because, yeah, a bit of a complicated mechanic, but some people might not know about that, so good to explain it. <laughs> yeah, for sure, 100%. We see Jewel Seeker concluding for a Power Pad and an iron -O. And let's see, Nest Ball going to be played as well. I imagine this could be finding a Dusk Goal, right? Or... Uh, yeah, I mean, you've got, got to think, right? Either that or it could be... Oh, that Pheasant Dippity, of course. Flip the scripts, get, get, a, get some more cards drawn in. Very... This, this has been such a format-defining card, I think. More, yeah. Like, Shrouded Fable, with those two cards alone, with Dusk Goal and Pheasant Dippity, just completely changed the way our current format is played. Should have called this set Pheasant Dippity Dust Noir. That's what <laughs> the set should have been. They are the Shrouded are Fable. The, yeah, they are the Shrouded Fable. Here we do see Power Pad. We see a Terrapagos EX hit the, dis uh, hit the bench, I should say, and then Power Pad shuffling in Penny and Professor's Research. Shuffle, 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 and it looks like we will then be seeing the iron -O, and then we will be seeing the flip the script, I would imagine, after that. Yeah, maybe searching the iron -O now. I mean, mm, I was thinking, w w is there a world in which you want to try and just dig for the Penny now? But I guess it's fine to just put it back into the deck and use it later. You can always Jewel Seeker it out when you need yeah. it, right, I guess. So, yeah, six draw of iron -O, flip the script, drawing three more. That is looking like a very, very good hand. And yeah, you're just happy to attack again, take the KO, right? <laughs> I mean, Jay, we put James on a four-card hand. Not that much going on. Uh, yeah, no Fez obviously was developed. Yep. Well, because it was in the prizes, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. it was in the prize cards, now it's now to the bottom. Yeah. Oh, that, oh, that hand is really good, though. Just Ultra Ball, Reggie Drago V, and a Professor's Research. I think you can't ask much better than that off an Ino to fall. No, we'll take that. So let's see what James... Oh, and a Dragapult as well, just so the, for the easy discard. Yeah, we'll get rid of that. Obviously, I think there's one already in discard pile. We've been using Phantom Dive, but we'd love to get it in the discard pile. The very Just get it out of the deck. Yeah, of course. Oh, interestingly enough, there was... So he's not going to put down the other Reggie Drago V because there was another card to discard in hand. Uh, he could have discarded this, another Ultra Ball instead of the Dragapult, but it's opted to keep the Ultra Ball in hand instead with the Research. Uh, so th there's two cards in hand right now, uh, Professor's Research and Ultra Ball. Interesting. Yeah, so could have... Oh. Okay. Maybe thinking I don't want to bench another Reggie Drago V here? Maybe because you want to clean up at the end of the game with Radiant Charizard, maybe. Yeah, yeah. you don't want to have another two prizes. That makes sense. Way, perhaps, yeah. Okay, so we do see the Professor's Research being played there for James. We're going to discard the hand draw seven. Just need to get a basic energy, as we do see an Earth Investor. So at the very least, Apex Dragon is now alive. Yeah, and of course, going to get rid of that cancelling cologne. Uh, James is not seeing any Manaphy. No worry about shutting off that to make uh, do a big try for us later on. And um, of course, you can't use it to shut off Boothlon either, because you yeah, can bring one in the active and cancelling clone it, but then the other one also has yeah. the ability, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's an interesting little... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Little uh, interesting interaction as we see Till Dance activation, draw one. So Whoop. it's a Nest it's a Ball. Ball, okay. This finds Radiant Charizard, perhaps. Oh, Fez and Dipity, of course, that makes sense as well. Yeah. Got to draw those cards, flipping the script. But I mean, I don't think he's thinking for anything specific here. I think he just wants to like fill up his hand as much as possible and try and get the setup for the next turn as good as it can be. Yeah, definitely, like you mentioned, finding that Radiant Charizard will be key. Oh, finds that Giratina as well, and a that's Hoot Hoot. Yeah, that's good to get those set up. We do see energy attachment for the turn on Reggie Drago V-Star. 
Yeah, there's no way for James to get the Giratina V-Star in the discard pile, but that Hoop Hoop bench is going to be really, really good. So Cleffa, go to the go to the bench, retreat, bring up the Regidragon V-Star, and I guess yeah, it's just going to be Apex Dragon copying Phantom Dive again. You will take a double... No, you want to take a double knockout here, actually. There's nothing no. to put six on. So yeah, one on the Rotom set up for next turn, and then I guess you could put one on the Hoot Hoot as well. Like uh, I'm not sure how you want to spread this here. No, one on the Trap Ghost, two on the Hoot Hoot, and one on the Pheasantipity. Okay, fair enough. Oh, no, maybe not. Changing his mind. It's interesting, the, the damage spread. There's so much to think about in terms of how you want to you yeah. move things around. Guessing it just helps bring stuff down into range of other attacks, I guess. Yeah. Well, there's a, there's a pitch up draw. Not very useful to Nico right yeah. now, given there's no pitching in play. So the script comes in straight away with three cards drawn. What's he find? There's a, oh, there's a double turbo energy. That's a good first piece. It's a good part of the puzzle. Could this be a thought on turn, perhaps? I, I think this so. would be that would be incredible but to line it, that up. It would be really good because then not only with the Fortin, you could swap out that fan Rotom and stop it from being a Phantom Dive yeah. target, but then also, yeah, you can evolve it into Dust Noir. And yeah, if there's any turn to Fortin, I think it's got to be this turn. And I'm sure. Oh, it's in hand as oh, well. It's in hand as well. Oh, it's my hand. Goodness gracious didn't me. I didn't even realize it was Andrew. We're going to have to do a Jewel Seeker. We can't even do that. I thought I'd have to try and find it the old fashioned uh, way. I, I think he's and doing I think it. it's ironed it up. Ironed up the Dust Skull. Okay, so Thornton, as we said, lets you swap one of your basic yeah. Pokemon from play with a one of your discard pile. Oh, you can swap the Fez as well to uh, deny a two-prizer. Oh, I like that. Prizer. Goodness gracious. So yeah, the Thornton will swap one of your bench Pokemon in play with one basic Pokemon with your discard pile. And as Fred rightly said last uh, term, all effects uh, carry on. So it's going to be in play for oh, over wait. a turn. So oh, wait, no, but you just put the Fez down. So now he can't wreck Handy, right? What do you mean? Oh, no, was the Fez down last turn? Yeah. Oh, it was. Oh, yeah. So, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, don't mind me. Don't mind me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there we do see Curse Blast is now online. 130 damage can be, well, 13 damage count is placed on the active. Unified Beatdown is now in KO range. Yes, it sure is. I got mixed up because James just got down. Yeah, James. Yeah, 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 but, yeah, but Nico had an average. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Anyway. Thought, and if you're James now, I mean. <sighs> How would you play around Fortin at any time? You put James probably well, you can't. Yeah, <laughs> James probably thought, oh, okay, there's going to be no cursed bars. So I can go around like this. But now you know that Thornton's in the deck. You think, oh goodness, that's going to really yeah. change how you play the game. And now James is in a very similar situation to the way he was in game one, where there's no Reggie Dragon V Star out. So now you really have to dig for this Radiant Charizard to finish out this game. And there's a Nest Ball and Fire Energy in hand, but I mean, it does 250 damage. Yeah. After the, the 60 I reduction for the from the Curly Wall, it's 190. That's not enough to KO a Terrapagos. Yeah, the Curly Wall. <laughs> really building a wall for James just yeah. to try and get around there. Going to make life hard. That's what it, I've always found it interesting that the booth I didn't see as much play because I think the card is incredible. Oh. As we do see double turbo energy, unified beat down for game. Here, hang on, James is up to the races though. What has James seen? Nest ball. Oh, wait. Uh, uh, Nest ball. Wait, boss, boss on. Wait. Did, oh, James only one prize left, of course, because of Dustmore. Oh, oh course, never mind. Yeah, 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 yes. yeah, yeah. We got there. So, Buster's orders, Combustion Blast onto Noctar, well, onto anything, actually. That's not a Terrapa Ghost. And James was able to take game two. Yeah, that's. I, I think I thought that the prize had already been taken, but no, yeah, James did two, yes. two prize knockouts. So, with the Dustmore and one prize, yeah, yeah. Buster's orders comes in and yeah, gets the easy KO. <laughs> so, yeah, Curly Wall, not useful in that instance, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> well, this will put the Curly Wall up, but it's not enough when you <laughs> slam it into the other. Well, not, it wouldn't even activate for Noctile, would it? So James takes game two. Woo, big sigh of relief there, my friend. And let's shuffle up and get to game three. Now, I'll be honest, a lot of the time these decks can go quite fast. You might have enough time for a game three. Yeah, I think so. And both these players are playing fast as well, just physically with their actions. We, we can just see it here in the replay, just going super lightning fast. James with that really awkward start, not able to do much of anything, but that legacy star, uh, V-star power there being used, bailing him out, finding exactly what he needed in terms of the energy switch and a teal mask ogre pond yeah. just to get the first attack set up, get rid of that Pidgey, which of course we saw was so vital for Nico. Yes. And this is really where Nico, James started to take control of the game. It really was. And we said, you know, Legacy Star, we want it to be using to get cool stuff. But if it gets you in the game, it gets you in the game. As we do, see so that Phantom Dive again, just denying that Dusk Goal, just making life hard for Nico. We was, and Nico was able to do some fine things back, Penny and all that jazz. But this was the Phantom Dive here, just setting up stuff. And both players are getting ready for game three. There's the fist bump. How long have we got? 14 minutes. That's enough. Plus three <laughs> First three turns. Prize cards. Pheasant Dipity prize again. Oh, no. Penny in the prizes. Knocked out on Blood Moon Earth Luna. Oh, rough. I mean, it, I mean, not plus play plenty of Blood, Blood Moonus Luna and uh, Penny. That's uh, those are two rough one-off surprise. Yes. Okay. Nico starts off there with a buddy buddy puffin. I imagine we're going to see a fan Rotom getting grabbed with that, and the fan Rotom basically says, "Right, here come the rest of the gang." And here is 
Buddy, but well, here is the fan Rotom. And let's see what else Nico Tuck grabs. Yes. Oh, uh, just having a look at James's hand as well, just whilst Nico's doing a deck search. It's don't think it's quite as bad as the bad hand as the last time, but it definitely is not looking great. There's a, a Mew and a Teal Mask Ogre Pond, but there's no draw supporters or anything like that. So we're kind of relying on that on that Mew Exus restart ability and the Teal Dance to get into the game and get a Reggie Drago V. And uh, I, was, I, was, I was also grabbed another fan Rotom there off of the uh, <laughs> off of the fan call. I mean you can if you want to, yeah, but you uh, can yeah. if you really want, but <laughs> Yeah, oh, I think there's a bit of discussion there because he put it down. Is it oh. like, is that committed to that? But uh, I think James is saying, you know, you know what, it's fine. It's, uh, yeah. I think J James knew what Nico was going for, so saying, you know what, it's fine to switch it. Yeah, if, you know, when you're trying to play fast and all that, sometimes, you know, you just see the colorless Pokemon, you've put it down. But let's see how, what happens here. So, fan call. So, the deck, honestly, it just sets up so nice. So, it looks like trying to work out. Yeah, so there's a. Players are shuffling here, just yeah. debating on what to do. What do you think, Nico? How do you think Nico's going to approach this game three? Yeah, so I, I think you just kind of do something similar to. Oh, wait, is there something going on in the discussion? There's still a little bit of debate as to whether something needs to be switched Yeah, so while, while they're doing that debate, what, how would Nico approach this game for yeah. you, yeah, so, what's he, so I think you just do something similar to what you did in game one, which is already what he's doing. You know, you just uh, go ahead and you just uh, make sure that you get your setup nice and um, you know, as possible. Yep. Go wide with your hoot hoots early on and get a Duskull down so you can do an early curse blast. Yep. Get the Knock Towel, the hoot hoots ready to go so you can go for that Jewel Seeker. And uh, he's doing all that very effectively. Yeah, okay. And then. It's just tough though, game freeze when you get into this sort of winning in scenario. You know, you've been there actually. What goes through your head in winning in, you know, game three as well, right? It's especially in a situation like this. I've been in this exact scenario before. So, okay. so my, my 2016 Worlds run, yep. my last match was like that, was against Franks Diaz. And you kind of have to just sh shut everything else out. You know that this match basically means whether you have a chance at making top eight or not, uh, because, you know, bubbles and all that. They're, yeah, yeah. they're not going to go down to that story again. They're not going to go down that road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but regardless, yeah, you, um, you know that there is so much on the line there, but you have to just keep calm and just play your deck the best you can. It's, it almost seems like a bit of a cliche to say, but if you're not going to do that, then you're not going to play well and you're not going to win. So you just you just can't think about it. Yeah, you have to just treat every game, treat every turn, you know, as it comes. But I don't win it in for a top eight international challenge. I managed to win that one, but you know, I had weakness on my side, so I wasn't quite as nervous, unfortunately. You know, when Landorus, the X people have been playing uh, all the way back then, when Hammerhead's hitting for weakness with strong energy, you know, all of a sudden uh, the games feel quite easy. But yeah, we're in scenarios. For, but the thing is, here though, when you've got all this cash prizing, mm -hmm. you know, they've got this harder invite, I think, you know, you have to play some top 125. Everything matters, you know. Yeah, it does. Every SCP matters, and when the prize in scales exponentially in that top eight, you really want to make sure you get there. Um, have you had a chance to play in? Well, granted, there's only Dortmund regionals, but um, were you were you were casting for Dortmund regionals? Yes. Oh, yeah, you were. Yeah. So you haven't had a chance to play in this format yet, have you? With this like new tournament structure change? Not in. No, not um, in. Not in uh, this. Not in like a regional set. And just been playing at local yeah. leagues. So, and stuff, so, so I, I made that point because I was playing in Dortmund. Yes, you was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, with yeah, yeah, Rapagos, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. And what I realized playing it is that. The kind of the feeling that you get in terms of ones is to carry on is so much more because every single point counts now. Yes. You can't just like yep. reach a certain threshold and think, oh, I'm done. I've got my invite. Now you need to stay in that top 125. And it, I definitely felt it when I was playing. I was thinking, oh, hold, hold on. This kind of yeah, changed my perception of the tournament a bit. So yeah, definitely feeling that from experiencing it from the player side as well. Yeah, no, it's, I said every single match point realistically. Well, it, it can make or break your run, and it yeah. just gives you less margin for error here. So that's why you, know, you want to try and take those ties into wins as often as possible. So, yeah, yeah this is just a tough scenario to be in at the very least. And uh, yeah, it's just whew, it's not a place I want to be in. Um, I'd rather sit here and talk about well, people who are winning it. Well, to that exact point, do you see yourself playing your regionals uh, this season? At least yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You I see last. I got points. That was my car. I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't going for top eight. I was playing the Alga. I loved that. Managed to get some points with that. Loved that. I think I managed to do the most uh, damage in one oh. attack um, in the room. It looks like play yeah. might have been yes. started here. So let's even get back down there. Um, yeah. And yeah, it looks like this turn for Nika has ended with a dust squat, a hoot hoot, and another hoot hoot in play. Yeah. Now, um, just to give you guys a quick update at home, the reason why that happened. So there was a two-minute time extension due to a slow play warning, and there was an oh. appeal, and there was appeal going on for that warning. That was why we had a little bit of a okay, call there. Okay. 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 Thank you for that update, there, Freya. Do you know who this, the slow play warning was for? Um, no. Okay. <laughs> well, hopefully we'll try and get confirmation of that. But anyway, is up James now. We're going to start the game off. Remember, we have got a two-minute time extension. Yeah. Oh, and it looks like there was a Red Dragon we found. Okay, either it was already in the hand or he uh, drew it off of the Teal Mask. I didn't, I didn't see it there. But uh, yeah, that, so James is going to be pretty happy with this turn one in that case. 
Mew down as per drawing extra cards. There's one Teal Mask Ogre Pond down. In fact, this is probably going to be a pretty ideal turn one because with the going second, of course, you can attack on your first turn and now you can just you, you play out your hand as much as possible and then go for that uh, grasping draw from the Clever to refill your hand. Yep, that Clever. I think got led in game two as well, right? So yeah, Clever's, yeah. <laughs> Clever's really getting involved. Look to see that from little Clever. We're going to see a Teal Dance activation. Going to attach your Grass Energy and draw one. There's the Fire Energy. You need to see that. Another Teal Dance Ogre yeah. Pond coming oh, down. You know what? I think the Red Dragon might have been the top deck for turn, actually, now that oh. I think about it. <laughs> like, just the way I definitely didn't see it in the hand before. So I was saying you had to dig for it with the restart and the teal dance. We just found it off the top. <laughs> That's it. Okay. Oh, okay. No, clarification. The appeal, it was, it was to that mix up with the fan row, Tom. That, that's what it was. So it was just that mix up where Nico were getting the other fan row, Tom, okay. and the fan called said the thing. So it was just appeal to um, basically. To, re to reselect that, so that's uh, so that's all squared up now. Okay, yep. Yeah. Many thanks to our table judges and all the staff. They'll be keeping a tight handle on what is going on. I'm sure they're doing a fantastic job. Shout out to them. Without those judges and staff, we wouldn't be here right now. You wouldn't be watching. We wouldn't be talking about it. So shout out to them. They do a terrific job. Now, James is going to do an Earth Investor. They're going to get rid of a boss or two bosses. All oh, the discarded now, might I say. Another Teal Dance actor. And again, you know, this is a fantastic start for the Reggie Drago V deck. Yeah, it really is. And uh, also now, uh, even though yeah, those two bosses were discarded, as we talked about before, you're feeling pretty okay with that, knowing that at least you can get them back with that Legacy Star ability. There we do see Grasping Draw. Yep. Okay. Top, top, top the hand again. Top, and top the hand nicely. And then it's over to Nico now, who's going to start us off with that Jewel Seeker Freya. We love to see that. Yeah. Yes, I'd love to see that. So good. Searching that deck now, and I imagine going to be grabbing an area zero under depths for sure. And I think, much like in game one, Nico is going to want to target down that one Reggie Drago V as quickly as he can. Well, it looks like going to go for the Iron Earth. That would. Well, that's not. Iron is not a boss's order. Is the Prime Catcher in hand? Yeah, the Prime Catcher. Oh, in Prime hand. Catcher's in hand already. Goodness me. Ready. Okay, so Feather Ball, yeah. uh, Ultra Ball going to be in play here. Yeah. That's um, going to grab Dust Noir. Oh, right, and it looks like Nico was uh, indeed forced to keep that fan rotom in the end. Yeah, because, well, now it's in the discard pile. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> At the very least, Ultra Ball Fodder. Yes, so there it is. Rare Candy into the Dust Noir, and then go ahead and, yeah, Prime Catcher, bring up that Red Dragon V, and then go for, yeah, you go to the, the Dust Noir, of course, because you can just use the ability, so KO itself, and then bring that Trap Ghost back active. In comes the Area Zero Under Depths. Curse Blast gets uh, the damage on there, and then, oh, this is a really cool synergy here, because you go for the Curse Blast, you force your opponent to take a prize, yeah. and then you Iron O to make the, what the amount, draw the, the amount that they draw less. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, an insult to injury there, especially after James just had the Grasping Draw hand as well. That's now gone, we'll get our hand of five double curly wool boom plants have come down so now that's online might i say and we see and i guess all they can wants to do here is try and get some more bench pokemon how about another dust god we know how powerful curse blast is yep. and there we see the unified beat down for ko nico takes the first two points care of this game and with that uh reggie drago v being ko that dust goal is completely safe as a one of because yes. there is no chance of james getting out a reggie drago v star this turn yep what a turn there for nico Goodness gracious me. Curly Wall's online. Dust Skull's online. Unified Beatdown's online. James, what can you do? Got to try and take them all offline. I, I mean, yeah, what can you do here? I mean, if oh. later on in the game, uh, maybe you can use a Radiant Charge to get KO, but there's, no. there's, there's only two prizes taken, so you need free energy attachments, I guess. Well, I, in, oh, it's, it's, you, it's possible. Actually, yes. It's, but now we see this energy switch going to the Reggie Drago. I'd be very surprised if we see that now, though. I think he's just setting it up for later. Oh, he is thinking about it, though. There, there, there is that Radiant Charizard in the hand. It is in the hand. Hmm. Combustion Blast could get used. But it doesn't take a KO with Curly Wall, though, right? Uh, no, no, the Curly Wall prevents the KO for sure. But uh, yeah, maybe that's why he's thinking. Well, he's committed to the energy search now. So yeah, he's going to put that down. I, I guess you just put the Radiant Charizard down and research, right? Yeah, you definitely don't want to discard it. That's no, no, not at all. I mean, remember, Area Zero Earned Depths is still alive for James. So James can go wide and have the eight bench as well. Y yeah, sure can. So... Uh, it's a, that's what it goes, yeah, that's the, the one benefit of, uh, you know, it's one of those things that we talked about it yesterday as well with making sure they make use of your opponent's stadium as well. So, yep. you know, we, you have the area zero under down. Yeah, there it is. Six Pokemon yeah, wide on the bench because you have that Teal Mask Ogre one in place so you can make use of your opponent's effect. Love to see that. <laughs> Okay, right. So another bench Reggie Drago V. That means they're going to be at very least, hopefully next turn, Reggie Drago V star for James. But what do you? Do? I don't know what. I don't know what we do here. Well, like, I mean, you still get the two Reggie Drago V down because then at least uh, you know that there's no way unless there's some like force and shenanigans. It's not like Nico's going to be able to take down both of the Reggie Drago Vs and win the game. So you put two down. Maybe one get KO'd and you can get one Reggie Drago V star out. We see another nest ball, but I just. 
do we just end the turn with a grasping draw then? Uh, I guess so, yeah. yeah. It, it's still a single prize, right? I think that's probably your best option right now, just to. Oh, and oh, making further use of the areas that are under depth. Nest ball for a hoot hoot for good measure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we like go. that. We like that. This really is the mirror match going on here. And you know that none of these bench are going to be discarded because there's no way that Nico's going to get rid of his own stadium. In fact, I don't think he even plays a card that uh. let, would let him do that apart from well, apart from his own pitcher, I guess. But uh, Oh, yeah, true. Yeah, but uh, that's not even coming into play anyway. So, yeah, grasping draw comes in. Two cards drawn. So now it's going to be on Nico to find a more gusting cards to try and just keep this tempo up. But the advantage is definitely on Nico's side here. Yep, Jewel Seeker is going to basically line up anything Nico wants to do. He will be able to do for the most part. There are no Pidgeot around yet, but I, if you I, haven't I got Pidgeot, you, Jewel Seeker is just fine. I gotta say, in this situation, do you really even need it? I mean, there's actually some builds of Terrapicos that opt to not even play the Pidgeot and just go full 4-4 four, four Noctowl line just to yeah. go really with it. And yeah, the, 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 straight away, the Jewel Seeker searches for the Buddy Buddy Poffin and the boss's orders. Two more Pokemon go down onto the bench. Boss's orders are going to bring up the Reggie Dragon view with two energy and when they get, get, you get the KO. And what do you do if you're James here? See, this is the scary thing. We don't even need to use any Curse Blast, I actually no. get a two price KO here, so those Dust Gold can just sit there, Ben. You can't get rid of them all. So his boss is always going to go after two energy Reggie Drago V. Unified Beatdown does 220 when you've got eight cards on your bench. So that's a nice, crisp, clean KO. James Cox, uh, well, James Cox on the back seat here. Nico, take, uh, Nico takes another two prize cards. Let's see what he can do. Legacy stars online. Yeah, yeah, that's, that, that's going to be the one thing that's going to bail James out here. I think it's really going to be I and O and Prey. I think that's pretty much the only thing that James uh, can do here. Okay, so let's have a look. Ultra Ball. Going to discard Dragapult EX and Reggie Drago V Star. Yes, so that, that gets the attacker in the discard pile, and that means you can then Ultra Ball for. I mean, I'm not sure where you even get at this point, but he is looking into the deck. Oh, Noctowl, of course. Okay. That will do very nicely because then you can go ahead and search for that Ino straight away. Yeah, just not even wasting any time there. We, we know that he's evolving into that the Noctowl. Jewel Seeker's going to come in, yeah, going to grab the Ino and the Earthen Vessel. So that now then that will search the extra energy you need. And I think now with the Legacy V Star, I think there's the it's guaranteed in a discard pile that there's uh, two energy switches to actually make this happen. Yes. The only problem is, what are Curly Walls online? We can't get through that Terrapagos in one hit, I believe, right? Uh, oh, no. That's, oh, that's a good point, actually. Maybe... Mm. There's oh, Temple of Sinnoh. Sino, okay. There goes Noctowl. Yeah, but I mean, the, the, the discards there are not too not too tough, right? Yeah, it's two uh, Noctowl and a Fan Rotom. Both players, yeah. Yep. Oh, but there's the Prime Catcher on the Hulu. Okay, this works, because then you can just get a double knockout with a uh, fan dive. So this is sort of like saying, I'm going to Iono you, and you haven't got any bailout options here, because you're yes. only Pokemon that can evolve Hoot Hoot. I'm going to get rid of it. Oh, they, so we, yeah, we think Mr. Crime, Prime Catcher, but that completely changes his turn, because yeah. now this is how James makes the comeback here. Yes. You, you KO the Hoot Hoot and uh, a Dust Goal, and now it's very, very hard for Nico to take the comeback and win. So we do see Legacy Stylers, Energy Switch have been eyed up. I imagine they'll probably be the two cards, unless uh, James managed to draw into them. Here we go, Legacy Star, discard top seven cards of your deck, take back any two cards from your discard pile, but yep, Energy Switch times two it is. Yes, easy choice there. Energy Switch number one, Energy Switch number two, and then here it comes with the Phantom Dive, K of the Hoot Hoot, and one of the, one of the Dust Goals, I guess? Probably, yeah, because you want to yeah. deny the chance for like a double rare candy. Uh, oh no, actually, oh, no. you're going to gonna spread the damage again. Interesting, okay. I like the idea of trying to soften up those curly walls. If you can get them offline. Yes, absolutely. That's really good. Remember, ten percent has been used. Okay. Uh oh. Freya. Nest ball. Oh wait, present dipity. Flip the scripts. Is this the bailout that Nico needed? Oh, here we go. It all can comes down to this. And the Pheasant Dippity flip the script enough here and get Nico Nico into the top eight of this regional. Goodness gracious me. Flip the script, then you draw three cards if one of your Pokemon was knocked out last turn. Of course, the Hoot Hoot was. If Nika can find enough extra bench Pokemon and a boss's orders, you can bring up the Mew EX and KO it for the last two prizes. But does Nico see it? I see the. Oh, there's a Fortin and a Night Stretcher. You could Fortin and, and switch into a Hoot Hoot so you can still use Jaw Seeker. Yep. That would work. That would be incredible. Thornton times two. Look at getting eyed up, Thornton. Ooh. I think he's thinking about it. He just wants to make sure that he's not, you know, mis misinterpreting the situation, that he can put this all together. So, yeah, there it is. Fortin switching to Duskull for the Hoot Hoot. That Duskull has been in play for a turn. Yep. So you can then go ahead and Night Stretcher. You get the Knock Tower, and now you can use Jewel Seeker. Does, oh, um, yeah, I think that, that's surely that's it, right? It, it depends on what else he has in hand, because he needs... There's uh, a Buddy Buddy Poffin in hand, right? There's a... Um, is there enough Pokémon in the deck? Um, it, I think it's just a matter of whether he... Has he played his Prime Catcher yet? Oh, wait, no, you can uh, Dust Noir and hit the Active, and then just uh, KO the Active. Oh, yeah, that also works yes. as well. I think we need to replace the stadium, of course. Yeah, we need to replace the stadium. We need to get one more Pokemon down because uh, 130 plus 130 won't be enough with the double turbo in effect. So, oh wait, 
No, you just need one more Pokemon down, because if you keep Temple of Sinnoh in play, you do Rare Candy Dust Noir, and then, oh, he's going, wait, go for a research? You just, you just fortened. You can't research. I might not be playing it right now, at the very least. I, I guess not, but yeah, but, but if you can Rare Candy Dust Noir, then I get you there. We just need to replace some Pokemon. There's the areas that are under depths. Um, yeah, replace, places the stadium there. Uh, yeah, so, uh, uh, Pidgey down. Hold on a second, because surely you go for the Rare Candy Dust Noir, right? Okay, it looks like that's, oh, not, no, just that's not what Nico okay. wanted to do. I mean, to be fair, it's not like Nick, uh, Nico can lose this turn, at the very least. No, no, that, that is true. So, um, yeah, because with the way James set up the damage, yeah, there's no yeah. there's no four price turn happening, right? So maybe Nico's just playing it a little bit safe, thinking, hold on, I don't need yeah. to win straight away. Yeah, yeah. I can do this over a couple of turns. Yeah, this makes sense, too. Okay, so over to James here. Going to start off there with a Teal Dance. Attach one Grass Energy, draw one. Okay, remember that Templar Center has gone now, and there is no Legacy Star available. The Templar Center will not be coming down. No, no, it won't. Super I think James odd. does play a Jamming Tower, so can opt to a place to stage him again. I don't think we've seen that so far. Yeah, that, that would be the other... Like, in the last game, we noticed that James did keep that just for that option. Even yes. though it's, it's not really shutting off anything in Nico's deck, it's still a way to counter the areas that are under depth and to reduce the amount of damage that Unified Beatdown does. But yeah, here comes the Super Rod, shuffling in. Just a bunch of energy here. Looks like a, a Fire and Two Grass. Maybe might be thinking about Kertagging with that Radiant Charizard, because, of course, then you kind of force uh, Nico to have like a bit more of a game plan around it. I don't... So, what is it? There's 140... No, 160 damage right now on this Reggie Drago V-Star. So one Cursed Blast can get the KO. Hmm. There's a bit of a, there's a bit of a tricky interplay here. Yeah, you, put, you almost certainly want to go for this Iono because yep. uh, then you, you put Nico down to a low hand size again. There's still no Hootoo on the field. And, and Thornton has been used now. Yeah, Thornton has been used now, <laughs> yeah, indeed. You have to imagine Pidgey being all right. Surely this Iono has to stick, all right? <sighs> you, you, you think you hope, so. You, you hope. hope. But then you need to KO this Terrapagos because otherwise you just attack again and then, then the game's over. With the empty walls online, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, so you're not even taking the KO, and oh, there was no grass energy found either. Oh, sorry, rather, no fire energy, so you can't attack with the Radiant Charizard. Yeah, that's a jamming yeah, tower. Jamming tower. I mean, you surely just get rid of the Noctowl here, right? Yeah, I think it's got to be. Go yeah. keep those curly walls online. With that. Oh, I guess, hold on, with the one damage counter. Um, Lost Impact actually does enough. That's why okay. you put the fountain. Yeah, okay. that, that's what it is. So, yeah, you, you can copy the Lost Impact here, and you actually can KO the Trapagos. Okay. So that was actually very clever earlier with the Phantom Dive. Yeah, the one damage counter makes the difference because now even with the curly wall, it's a knockout. <laughs> two, 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 two twenty plus the ten, two thirty. Yep. Yeah. And that is why James Cox is winning in with Reggie Joao. <laughs> it looks a bit odd at the start. Okay, what has Nick Nico actually got here? Uh, Ultra Ball Iono. I think he's debating whether he wants to Iono first and then flip the script, or which way around he wants to do it. Nest Ball's fin one card. I like that. Shuffles the deck as well because yeah. his research was put to the bottom. I mean, because all you really need is a double turbo, right? If you get if you, if you get a double turbo, you just attack and win the game. Nico does not need a lot. Um, Rare Candy does not get him there too. Yep. He has out. It's just about digging for them. Oh, there's the Blood Moon Ursa Luna as well, so he can even uh, maybe if he can get the well, if you get the Dust Moon, you win anyway. But that would be, I think he's just playing that to thin the deck. Just, yeah, thin the deck. Okay, here we go. Double Turbo Energy gets us there. Yes, so sir. does Rare Candy Dust Noir. Uh, flip the script. For three cards. What does Nico draw? I see a Terrapagos, I see a Pidgey, and I see a Ultra, no, an Ultra Ball that's not going to get there. Oh, my goodness. Is even a draw support apart from the Iron? I don't think I don't was. think so. I think it might be Finn the Deck. Oh, wait, what is that? What is that fancy looking card? <laughs> I can't tell. It's uh, which one? Oh, it was a Terrapagos. Yeah, my bad, yeah. my bad, my bad. Yeah, okay. you, you play Ultra Ball here, you Finn the Deck as much as possible. I don't believe Nico is playing Dust Clops, so that isn't an option. So, yeah, you just grab whatever just so you don't draw back into it. You play the Iron O and you cross your fingers and pray. <laughs> Iron O to two. Double Turbo Energy or Rare exactly Candy. Rare Candy Dust. It has to be exactly those two cards. Edge of the seat stuff for the win and end. It is coming down to the last draw. These two cards off this Iron O. A double turbo or rare candy dust clop, dust clop, dust noir rather, wins the game for Nico. Anything else will not win will not the game. And then James will be advanced to the top eight. Let's see, what's he draw? One, two. Power pad and something that wasn't a double turbo. That's a briar. That for free. Briar. It's not useful right now, unfortunately. Um, James on two prize cards as well. Oh. Consulting the discard pile here. We haven't missed anything. Right? Doesn't play a Mew E. Doesn't play no. Mew EX. And no other way to draw. Flip the script has been used. I mean, the Iono does help Nico a little bit. It means that it's not yeah. like, it's not like he's guaranteed to lose straight away. That Lyle, yeah. with the Trapagos in the active being fully fresh, there's no yep. lost impact KO at least. 
So yeah, it's going to have to be power pad, shuffle in some draw supporters, I would guess. And worth noting as well, I don't know if it's going to be super relevant here, but time looks like has been called. We'll get confirmation yes, it has. on yeah. what turn it is. I think there's a, there's a dice yeah. about one there, on now. There was a time extension, but we had it reported that that was added to the timer. So our timer is accurate, and yeah, time has been called currently. Okay. So we'll try to get confirmation who is, if this is turn zero, I imagine it probably is. But yeah, Power Pad are going to shuffle in those two supporters. But you're right, without that prior 10 damage, uh, that Terrapicus EX in the active is, well, fine. Yeah, yeah. It, it won't be killed by Lost Impact. So Lost the, Orders on Fez would get there, though. Yes, Lost Orders on, on Fez Dipsy, actually. Or, or even on, oh yeah, no, on, on Fez here yeah, this way. So let's see, it's down, down, top, down to the top deck. What does James draw here? Is it Fire Energy? It's an Energy Switch. Is it going to be Ultra Ball and then you go for the restart? <laughs> I think it might be. There is no Area Zero, so we won't be able to grab Fez and Dipity yourself. Yeah, um, alternatively... It is restart for one. For one, okay. What's his orders? Is it? Come on. Show is us, it? James, show us! James, you showman! Wait, what was it? Uh, no, there's no way, right? He'd uh, slam if it. If <laughs> it was a boss, they'd be getting slammed down. Yeah. Oh, it's a research. I mean, it's not a bad card. No, it's it, not. But, <laughs> but I believe James has used his Prime Catcher this, this uh, game, right? I'm fairly sure I saw it earlier, yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 he absolutely had. Yeah, he had that big turn with it yes, earlier. He did. Yeah. Oh, so both players right now at the, on the at the edge of their seats at the end of the turns in the time turns just falling a little bit short each one of them. Yeah, it's just everyone's so close, but we ain't trying to piece together these late game combinations. You know, a three car combination, you need to get all three of them. Two doesn't get you there. Yeah, so yeah, Phantom Dive, another 40 onto the benched. Bufalant, and then maybe he's thinking about KOing it, maybe? No. Uh, you don't want to actually flip the script, do you? No, no, of course not. So, yeah, 40 and then, or 10 and 5, and then, yeah, it'll be another 140 on the active. What does Nico draw? Double turbo turbo energy. In the game. Oh, that was a hoot hoot. I mean, that was a knocktail, I should say. <sighs> but, but, yeah, no way to get it down. I think that's it, and Nico scoops, and James Cox wins the match and has enough match points to advance into top eight. Wow, what a finale. Tell you what, James Cox, you played that really well, my friend. Had to navigate out of that game one really well, and James is able to advance. But massive commiseration there to Nico. What a back and forth that was. Both Oof. players, I feel, played that match up really, really well. I was really impressed with how effective that curly wall was, though, Freya. Not a card you see in all the Terrapagos decks, I'll be honest, but it seemed to put in a lot of value there. I mean, it bought him the turns that he needed. I mean, if granted, it didn't end up working out in the end, but without those Bufalons, he wouldn't even have stood a chance. James would have won way earlier. Yeah. So, wow, there we go. I think we have our replay ready. Let's take a look at the sort of key moments throughout that game. This is in game one where Nick Nico was just off to the races, quite honestly, and James didn't really manage to get much in this game realistically. You know, tried his best and was able to sort of stem the bleeding a little bit, but Nico was just off to the races. Unified beatdown, the curse blast, turn after turn. He even had to double attach after on the Temple of Sinnoh. I think we might be able to see that and just yeah, but it didn't look good. But it worked out well because yeah. it meant that with the 130 and then the lack of damage reduction because the Temple of Sinnoh shut off that effect too was yeah. actually just yeah. enough. And yeah, you can see the grimace on James's face there. And then following up, yeah, with Rare Candy, Dust Noir, and then ending off with the uh, Night Stretcher for the Blood Moonless Luna and retreating the uh, KO by using that Blood Moon attack for zero energy. Yeah, I'll tell you what's a great attack. That is when you attack for zero. And this is where, James, you know, I had to try and get back. Think, well, if I need to win both games to get into the uh, top eight and I'm one nil down, I have to win this game. I've got no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And James was able to do that with the phantom dives and, you know, had to do that legacy style of this game, which we didn't think, you know, wasn't the nicest having to use it for double energy switch. But if it gets you in the game, it gets you in the game. And that's what James was able to do. Yeah, you could see how much uh, James was struggling. We talked right at the start of this match about how when you're up against it, against someone that you know is you know, just as skilled as you and you're both at the highest level of play, you know how much of a struggle it is. And we could see that on both these players' faces as they were playing through. But both of them just not giving an inch, just making sure that they can go through all their plays as well as they can. And James here in game three, even with a slight awkward setup, was able to take that really key knockout on the hoot hoot there, spreading the damage perfectly with this follow-up attack then with the lost impact of the one damage counter yep. means it can get through that curly wall. And that's exactly why we saw that one damage get put there. It looked a bit odd at the time, and then we saw it come to fruition. And Nico you know, did everything he could, but at the end of the day, those ionos were going to stick eventually, and that's exactly what happened. James didn't take a KO on that last turn via the Phantom Dive. No, flip the script, and that means James is able to secure himself most likely a slot in our top eight. Yeah, a bit sad for my, my own cast of I've got to say, to Traficus and Dustin Noir. I went yeah. a bit all in on that, but, uh, you know, for the match I was, that was a really, really phenomenal match. It really was, and Reggie Drago V-Star seems to be the pick right now.